Ooh, it's grand finals time. Kirk Dupe snacks Dubay along Josh Zoinks Hebert. Here we go. Free low hunters versus bad macro flip bird. Um, and we're going to see if uh, free low hunters can bring uh, this bracket to parity and then try and win this thing. Yeah. Yeah. We have a, uh, we're the grand final situation. We got a best of three game, but if, uh, if the losers bracket team wins this one, we're setting or heading into another best of three. So uh, stick with us. We do have some more gameplay yet, but I think it's going to be a very good game that we're about to run into for sure. Absolutely. We're taking a look and seven mentioned earlier, free low hunters. They've been playing and they've been feeling it on the sticks. We saw Bowlby kind of catch fire uh, mm -hmm. in this last series that could pay, pay dividends for them. Um, and we're not too sure what uh, 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 bad macro flip birds has been uh, doing in the last, the last uh, hour and a half or so. So hopefully uh, they're not coming in ice cold. How big of a factor can that play in this uh, when you're kind of feeling yourself in a, in a, in a game such as Pokemon Unite? You know, I'm tempted to say it's not as big of a deal as some people make it out to be, especially when we're in an online environment. If this was a LAN environment, maybe I would be a little more concerned. But these guys, these guys are gamers. <laughs> They've been playing for a long time. Uh, so I think, yeah, I think we're just going to see a good, solid game. I think both these teams are going to be at the top of their game. They certainly have been the entire tournament so far. Mm -hmm. No surprises here out of um, Bad Macro Flipbird in their lineup and Bowlby back onto Zero Aura. However, Slash Can off the Venusaur completely now going back with the Alolan Ninetales that they used to kind of, we saw them kind of go on a three KO streak to close out of the last game we just commentated on. Thoughts on that? Well, this seems to be what Stray Dogs has found the most success with. I mean, it sent them to the grand finals play in this composition, so I, I think it's really good. I'm worried about the Alolan Ninetales not having enough impact when Gosu is on this Cinderace, though. Uh, the, the Ninetales is going to succeed very well in CCing or crowd controlling opponents, but it's going to be really hard to do that from such an absurd range. I think Gosu may be a little unchecked in this game unless Bulby can swing in with that Zeraora and cause some damage we're getting a quick clinic there on how quickly gosu can clear uh clear the farm there in the jungle as they are just mowing through these core fish and their final destination is the top top of uh, this map here and give some support to their lucario player gosu mowing them down turning into a raw boot and trying to get in the mix as uh bulby is already there uh, level four didn't clean out their jungle all the way to get in there finally hit level five but they're getting picked on a little bit as their force uh and they're sent scrambling and really that's the point of the junglers pulling up top is to not let one thing landslide into another as mm -hmm. those points are sitting at 14 17 both lucario's getting those stacks up uh for the attack weights yeah not for nothing stray dogs is sending is, is sending their eldegoss fire truck up to the top here so gonna be a bit of a three on two advantage in terms of stray dogs but uh all it does is just an early advantage on bees which i shouldn't undersell is still a pretty huge uh is still a pretty huge advantage in a lot of situations what does that leave though that leaves uh the three two on bot there so i wonder how bad macro flipbird was able to pressure that um they're certainly working towards it's really about taking those uh those audinos on your opponent's side of the field and if they're able to get some of those maybe it's something that paid dividends bulby with the fluffy tail able to come in and start mowing through that's why they're always in the jungle there they're using fluffy tail and the zero aura bulby on the verge though ghost able to bubble them out and look yeah. at that look at that pickup uh by the lucario there to close the door on him dexter not to be left out to drive gets their KO and pads the stats. Not only did they get the KO, also Gosu still cleaned up that Ludicolo and got the blue buff. Um, that was a really impressive patient play. You saw that Gosu just kept peeling, kept drifting back towards the lane every now and then said, yeah, come closer. Yeah, come closer. Everything's fine. And then finally was able to spike with the help of Dexter uh, to be able to, it's a really impressive movement on that jungle. Not often in game can you get a, uh, can you get a ranked Lucario to come all the way back from their scoring to come help you in jungle but uh when you're in this coordinated team play dexter is there to help absolutely fire truck thrown in a leaf tornado here bubbling out dexter and gosu easy peasy chris hero snow points uh and bruv in that bottom lane gonna work through the bees as they try and poach that aldino lolan nine tail slash can uh not worse for wear as they get in there and trying to get bees on themselves chris heroes pressuring geck the whole squad pressuring geck and they are able to stun geck but in their own goal zone as that's not going to do much as uh you know a little confused blast chris heroes below it ha half hp that's an easy scramble backwards uh and dreadnought is here yeah but look at 
that Chris Heroes, normally being this more susceptible, <laughs> squishy target, is able to push forwards past Bruv and into the front line if he's if if Chris's only opposition is going to be a Nine Tails and Mister Mime uh, is able to just sort of walk forward. But here we go. Bad Macro is going to be able to take that Dreadnought and leaving the Rotom up to Stray Dogs. Another case we're gonna we're gonna see this change of school of thought between the two teams. The Unite move on the chase by Ghost to easy peasy they see mr fire truck in their sights and they get fire truck they take fire truck down and that is a sick sick ko by uh <laughs> by the cinderace there as chris here i mean we saw neither contested right rotom was sent down clean and dreadnought was taken clean dexter yeah. working through the 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 middle core fish there as they're maybe looking to get a pick chris heroes getting their farm up as well Mm -hmm. Yeah, Dexter's half looking for the pick and half trying to find Sanji, I believe. Uh, they know he's missing somewhere on the screen. They want to find Sanji. They know he normally plays alone and see if they can swipe a free KO. It's never free when Sanji's controlling that character, but if he is alone, it makes it a lot easier. My Bowlby, the Zero Aura getting bubbled up a little bit by Bruv. Bruv going to start working on the Bs. So are Dexter and Chris Heroes in this bottom lane. Snow points not to be left out of the mix. They're working on those Bs. Fire Truck and everybody in the mix. Slash can. And what can you do? Unite move coming through. Not finding its mark. But that's a KO for Snow points on the Alolan Ninetales. And that might open the door for a little bit of push here. As Bruv is just kind of getting chased around by Sanji. Just kind of leashing them around. Uh, kind of getting them or keeping them out of the mix. As more stuff is happening downstairs and that's uh, um, Bad Macro trying to get some points and onto Stray Dogs before this Dreadnought appears. Yeah, Bad Macro Flipper not really living up to their name, definitely playing for that late game level advantage situation they're trying to set themselves up for uh, because they still are down by about 50 points. Now, that can be overtaken in a blink of an eye. Scoring happens quickly and often in Pokemon Unite, but still, that early advantage for Stray Dogs, if they capitalize on this well, could be a really impressive maneuver from them. We got Dreadnought coming up in about one second. It looks like we have a 2v3 fight in the bot lane with Bad Macro versus Stray Dogs. Yeah, it looks like uh, it just got evened up to a 3v3. Dexter, Chris Heroes, and Snowpoint's going to work around this Dreadnought and use that to their advantage here as they're working through. That's a Unite move by Bruv, putting on pressure on Bulby and Sanji. Sanji able to close it out on Gosu, but Bruv trying to work on Bulby, trying to get the KO there as well. But now uh, Bruv is on the ropes here as Dexter and Snowpoint's keep working on that uh, Dreadnought. And Sanji seeing the KO, Bruv gets hit. And finally, uh, Dexter able to close out that Dreadnought. Bruv able is bubbled out, but that's not before Stray Dogs puts a lot of work in on this Rotom, and they're chasing them down. Bulby coming in, hitting Bruv, hitting Bruv, hitting Bruv, and oh, just a confused blast onto um, onto that Zero Aura to create a little bit of a gap here. Sanji's on the chase. Bruv is trying to hang out. Another confusion blast using the environment very well there is Bruv. Uh, they finally go down, but that was a good little showing on how to play some mime on the retreat for sure. Chris Heroes now uh, just going to chip in and grab this Audino as they're responsible yet again for protecting that bottom goal zone. Yeah, the amount of time that Bruv wasted there is is very, very important. That being said, the Rotom did go into the hands of Stray Dogs again. This time, not netting them any points, but making sure that Rotom doesn't hit their Tier 1 goal zone. That right now, Stray Dogs having both initial goal zones up is actually going to be very huge. They have this advantage of a base to retreat to that's going to give them healing and more of a defensive situation. Uh, but right now, Fire Truck looking like they're in a little bit of trouble. Uh, <laughs> with the four members of Bad Macro Flipbird already being in Zap Pit, uh, but we're seeing quite an even spread from Stray Dogs, trying to give themselves intel on the map and seeing if they can find any avenue or angle to score early or get a nice little KO. I mean, uh, Fire Truck identified, isolated, and then deleted as uh, all of Bad Macro Flipbird is working through this top goal zone here. That's a Unite move um, that's coming through for Bruv, trying to clear out the trash here so they can get some points into this goal zone. Two minutes, 45 seconds left, and there is one of these objectives that's going to be able to be taken before the time runs out here as Bad Macro Flipbird is not willing to give up on this goal zone just yet. Uh, Dexter going down, however, and is that worth the push? They decide no. Slash can back in the bottom lane here eyeing up chris heroes look how many points are sitting on all these pokemon zoinks there is going to be a move to be made when zapto shows up yeah this is definitely everybody is waiting for the last minute i mentioned last game we had a low scoring game this game neither team has broken the 100 cap uh going before at two minutes and 15 seconds uh very not common but right now dreadnought almost deleted whoever wins this is going to have an incredible advantage 
Oh, there we go, and that's Bruv taking it down for Bad Macro Flipper, and that's a KO on the Lucario by Snow Points, and now they have a player advantage here. Do they push? They decide that they do. Gek is on the verge. It's being chased. Bulby gets taken down by the Eldegoss. Bulby, Bulby gets taken down by the Eldegoss. You have Gosu Easy Peasy. They're going to get 100 ducats up top. The pressure is on. Gek is on the chase. Dexter takes the KO, and now there's two down for Stray Dogs as they close out that goal zone, and look at that. Uh, uh, just under 200 point uh, swing there as Bad Macro Flipbird is immediately in the lead, and now Gosu is babysitting in the middle of the level 15 Cinderace, as now Stray Dogs has to make a play for Zapdos. We see the two players coming in from the right. They're running in through the choke point. Have they been identified? Not quite yet. Slash Cannon, Bulby, Fire Truck sitting around, Gek and Sanji. Not willing to commit just yet. Gek is watching out, and Gosu puts the pressure on Sanji, and the chase is on. Oh, upstairs we, upstairs we got another hundred ducats going in upstairs and it's time for stray dogs to turn this thing now because they need to put some pressure on unite move by the mr mime and they're gonna chip in chris heroes is in the mix we're gonna see who gets this last shot ko through streak of two for gosu oh. and they take it down stray dogs takes it down and they're all holding a ton of points as they have the pressure on gek and here we go oh. they need to get these points in 51 seconds 50 on the clock chris heroes trying to take the long way here bruv is pushing um uh, fire truck able to get 100 points in we need more points though gosu's eyeing them down but nobody else is on the board to get their points in they're going to turn around and back cap this thing in their face and keep them from scoring and increase this lead here as dexter comes in and all of stray dogs of save two have by bitten the dust there sanji still standing bulby still standing bulby going in trying to get a couple KOs for their effort here, but they can't as Dexter's putting the pressure back on. And Josh, this door has been closed in the face of Stray Dogs despite <laughs> that Zapdos. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yet again, uh, Bad Macro Flipbird lying uh, uh, with their team name. That team has done an incredible job of getting those back caps while not forfeiting that boss, uh, those boss Pokemon team fights. Uh, both Gosu and Dexter were able to drop 50s in the late end of that game game as well as chris i believe on that first tier one bot lane uh bot lane goal zone really impressive maneuvers from this team uh and that set them uh, in front even though they lost zapdos they lost zapdos when only eldegoss was was alive and kicking for stray dogs mm -hmm. eldegoss did have 40 in the pocket but that is not enough when uh bad macro already had a gigantic lead from getting those back caps in there Absolutely. It turns out, uh, Josh, 40 is not 400, which is mm. what they needed to yes. kind of flip that one on its head there. Um, clean play. When I saw Gosu cheating up top, you know, I mean, they executed and they jumped all over Stray Dogs to get that going and draw their attention somewhere else. And here we go. Gosu sneaks up top, gets the Hundo Burger in and makes it back to Zapdos before the game becomes about Zapdos. That's important. And then we saw Dexter do the same thing. They're like, hey, we're good here. We got a level 15 Cinderace that's mowing them down like a lawnmower on a fresh fresh, fresh group of green grass getting ready to cut, be cut down. Dexter rolls up top. They get a hundo burger in. And then, like you said, Eldegoss with 40 points in the bag. Uh, not only did they convert those points for not enough, they get KO'd, which takes them out as this mass avalanche of back caps begins to happen. Speaking of Avalanche, that was one thing we brought up in this team composition situation for Stray Dogs. Uh, running the Ninetales, I don't know if it gave them enough value for what they were looking for. Uh, it, it, honestly, the boss Pokemon going away, it, it seemed to be a foregone conclusion when both of these teams showed their hands of what their strategy was going to be focused on. They were mainly moving towards uh, trying to... Uh, one team was going for Rotoms, one team was going for Dreadnought. Team that got Dreadnought won this game, uh, but I'm not sure that Alone the Ninetales really was able to deal out enough damage or shut down. And we saw Bulby diving in with the Zeraora for a little bit of jungle invade, uh, trying to get a little bit of early cheeky KOs in the middle of the central area. But with Dexter as backup, that was a very hard thing to do. I'm not sure if it was even possible. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's take a quick pause to the cause here. Let's go back to Saran Wrap and Seven. Get a little bit of booth analytics here on that game as we square ourselves up for game two of the grand finals. Well, I can't really deny what uh, Sev uh, analyzed there. I mean, they had a pretty well eyed, uh, uh, eyed down game plan for what was going to happen with Zapdos. And it was, you know, we'll get our back cap ducats. We'll go ahead and meet at Zapdos. And we're going to focus on the opposing team, not the objective. So even if they convert the objective, We've converted on sending them packing back to their respawn point. Exactly. Josh, we really need to see something fresh here out of Freelo. Uh, you identified the Alolan Ninetales. Are there any other weak points or, or changes you'd like to see 
on their behalf that might uh, help bring this thing to an even one one uh yeah i mean i think uh i think the aggression is a good word for free little hunters uh i i think that was been their recipe for success in the majority of this tournament i like to see it a little bit more but i have to understand what i'm asking for is to be aggressive against one of the best <laughs> entrapment defensive teams in the game right now uh i think bruv easily takes the best mr mime in the game i i don't know if there's even a question of who's even close uh and then you have chris heroes who's just an incredible moba player in general is on a character that punishes aggression at every angle whether it's early game with that electro web or late game with that thunder anytime you're stepping into his uh into chris heroes zone of attack you are leaving yourself with almost no back door so if I'm going to see aggression from this team, it needs to be executed perfectly. And I would really like if Freelo Hunters was able to use, uh, get that Sanji and Bulmy duo together again. Uh, dive together. I know Sanji is needed elsewhere in terms of a lot of boss secures, but something, if we're going to make these early KOs work, make these early, uh, early attempts at throwing the other team off work, it needs to be with a little bit more backup, in my opinion. Absolutely. We see uh, we see the quick switch here from Bulby from that Zara Aura to that Greninja, which, as I mentioned, the previous right. round was looking very, very clean here. Um, and we're going to be watching uh, from the point of Sanji and the free low hunters for this game, too. So we're going to be sticking around on this orange squad here. The Sanji, of course, is working their way up the lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that game definitely was a uh, a well-secured game from Bad Macro, but I don't think that Free Low Hunters was without their chances to catch up. Uh, uh, this definitely is a, a close contested game and not a forgotten conclusion. Uh, but yeah, these uh, win conditions that they're trying to achieve are not going to be easy. Sanji just trying to swing in here, grab those attack weight boosts as much as they can, but Ghetto Kami stepped a little bit too forward uh, trying to oh. take the KO one, bruv. And that's two KOs for Bad Macro Flipper. This, this early game is uh, in shambles. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Slash Can and Gek going down. That's incredibly rare actions for them as Sanji is doing their best up top. Gosu already there for the pressure on Dexter and Sanji trying to cut them off. Here comes Bulby trying to right. give the assist here. Sanji goes down for their efforts, though, on the back of Gosu. Easy peasy, who cheated up and got the, got their uh, their raboot, and now the pressure is on. Slash can fire truck Gek taking the core fish as they also need to get their levels because they already have the Eldegoss across the way here, and it's about the bees. Yeah, all about the bees. A huge amount of EXP that's coming up every minute and ten uh, is going to be a constant point of contention. But wow, do not the aggression. Again. Come on, oh man, the fire aggression. truck goes down too. Good night. What did they do? Did they send a mean DM to Bad Macro Flipbird? Like. Good luck, GGs. We'll get you on this next one. Just tee them off. What is happening in that bottom lane? We haven't seen that like that thunderous amount of KOs happen this early in the game at all today. And much less did I expect it to happen in the grand final. Bad macro flippered, I believe. Maybe I was wrong in my original assessment before we started this game. I think the cold has been shaken off them a little bit, and the aggression game plan has now moved over to the purple side. Bad macro flippered is pushing every advantage they have, and it is paying dividends for them right now. Gek, don't get caught again, friend. Come on. <laughs> Gek working around here. That's nah, still a gossip floor and under eight minutes here. Normally, you want your, your uh, Eldegoss to be around level six by the first Dreadnought so you can start using Cotton Guard and uh, Leaf Tornado. Uh, but that fire truck has a lot of, uh, of fires to put out if they're going to get there real soon. Uh, here we go with 38 seconds. The, yeah, Freelo's definitely behind at this moment, but I, they're down but not out for sure. Uh, at this point in town, the, neither one of their tier one goal zones have gone down. They have got weak, but this, uh, this point differential is kind of their saving grace right now only 50 points but this is a winnable match if all the oh, is still alive golly oh, that's a ko streak of two let's we go. go for sanji and bulby both getting their points in and that's pretty clean and now you just you're just telling your bottom lane hold 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 come on we can rally out of this we can get through this seven minutes five on the clock Dreadnought is on the horizon. Gek pressuring. Bruv blasts them backwards. Fire truck getting caught off guard by that barrier, keeping them out of the mix here. As Bruv is just firing those very strategically, kind of <laughs> cutting off the free low hunters from each other. As that Dreadnought has already been started, and we're going to see who seals it. And bang, there you go. That's Dexter putting the team on his back, closing it out in Sanji's face. Sanji's moving around, and here we go. Gek gets taken out. And now Fire truck is caught. Bulby's downstairs, and they're overwhelmingly overtaken. As Fire truck is forced to retreat to get 
side of Barry, and there's four, all five players from Bad Macro Flipbird are in, are in their face as they're moving down, and you already see Sanji going up top to try and pressure this Rotom, and Chris Heroes is going that way too. As Sanji has moved up, gotten themselves a Corefish, they're grabbing some farm to get their levels up, as that was a heck of an experience down at Dreadnought. Tons of KOs taken by Bad Macro Flipbird. Yeah, impressive, impressive comeback from Bad Macro Flipbird. After having a really uh, negative experience in the top lane right before a team fight, it didn't stop them. Dexter and Ghost were able to come back, and they immediately go to pressure Dreadnought. The interesting thing was that so did Freelo Hunters. Neither team was uh, going after Rotom, even though they had a clear advantage in the lane, chose to prioritize the Dreadnought, but this time the team fight went in favor of BMFB. BMFB <laughs> has been called Chris Heroes, bang, 40. Snow points, bang. And it was it's like uh, all of Freelo Hunters just abandoned that top lane during the kind of what we call the farming phase of, of these games, you know, in between those objectives here, which is an interesting strategy. That goal zone was closed out. Sanji just trying to get their levels up a little bit, rolling with the team and trying to keep that bottom goal zone up as maybe they need it if they think they're going to put some relevant pressure here on this goal zone. Bolby is defending up top all alone. And we've got 28 seconds till Dreadnought. Freelo Hunters definitely hoping that more players from Bad Macro Flipper would go to push that Rotom, then giving them an easier chance of uh, dunking and scoring on those goal zones from a bit of a back cap angle. Uh, but that was not the case. Uh, Bad Macro Flipper decided, mm, we don't need those extra points right now. We're winning by almost 100 points. Uh, they're able to have a really good mental calculation and play that really smart, not giving Freelo Hunters any breathing room to come back. So if Freelo Hunters wants to find some, uh, find some KOs and isolate somebody, they're going to need to work really good hard. Good lord, that's a Unite move by Bruv as they use that just to stay alive, to be quite honest. Buddy Barrier's flying out everywhere. And now we're watching Bruv AD on the scramble. Did you see that Unite move come in from the Greninja Bulby? Didn't find its mark though, as only Lucario is down. Oh. Uh, and here we go. That is another KO for Gosu Easy Peasy. Fire Truck and Gek are forced to retreat a little bit. And that's two KOs down for Freelo Hunters. That's a uh, Slash Can, Fire Truck. Finally, Bulby's back, but that's Bruv taking that Dreadnought and here we go now they're going to pressure this bottom goal zone all their players are there except for dexter who's going back up top and they're pressuring this goal zone very very hard sanji fire truck sent a retreat and that goal zone is removed from the map wow yeah incredible play yeah the dark side of that greninja unite move is showcased there uh incredible amount of damage and speed but it does land you in the middle of the enemy team as soon as you use it uh not giving bulby any room for escape and bad macro flipper strikes back uh snow points pressuring and putting down a uh, fire truck there as slash can is just picking up the aos energy and scrambling backwards rotom's in eight seconds here um and depending how fast this goes down um won't have time for another one before zapdos here so the last objective is going to be not only this rotom but the last objective on the map before zapdos will be that dreadnought Slash can working through. That's a Unite move by Bruv getting right in the middle, bolstering, and they, oh, they got the push on Bulby too. And that's a Unite move. Is that Snow Points? Uh, excuse me, that was a Unite Fire move truck. by Fire Truck to yeah. pick up the rest of the team here. As now they're able to counter pressure on Bruv and they're pushing them down and they're going to mow them down. And that's a KO that took all four, getting the assist to close that out. And look at the screening out by Gosu <gasps> using the Unite move. Are they going to catch Bulby though? Is they're going to get finished off by Eldegoss that's chasing snow points? Flashes in to try and close that out on Bulby. Slash can is getting pressured now. <sighs> Bulby's going to make it out, but just barely as the pressure up top bad macro flip bird there when you're using your eject buttons to go into battle you know that things are going your way here <laughs> as snow points with all the confidence in the world slash can going to be left to their devices to play defense on this uh second tier goal zone yeah, all that team fighting for only the only thing to happen to be a Rotom set down the lane, uh, which is going to be pretty answered by free, uh, pretty easily answered by Freelo. But Freelo would have loved to have that Rotom going the other direction. Freelo really needs something, uh, some avenue for them to come back. Two minutes and 16 seconds, down by 120, and this is their tournament lives on the line. And Bad Macro Flipbird has already claimed Dreadnought. <laughs> Gosh, and you know, you can just look at the level disparities there. Uh, Bad Macro Flipbird is looking to just execute their game plan here. Be clean, stay clean. And look at that leaf tornado sending everybody scrambling like li a light being turned on. A bunch of cockroaches flittering around for their lives here. As the battle hasn't really kicked off, that is a cotton guard and that's a unite move and a unite move back 
and now all the buddy barriers are getting built up and it's who's can cut through them the fastest gecko kami getting identified they get mowed down here and that's one ko that's the first one that we see unite moves coming out from bulby uh bulby doesn't find a mark here sanji's still standing and we're looking to see if sanji's gonna go for the back cap they decide mm -hmm. that's the play and they're pretty wide open for it but you see gosu as well they're protecting that bottom goal zone bulby trying to make a play and just slash cannon fire truck working on zapdos and that means that oh, that tier was closed out this game just became a heck of a lot more uh within reach here as you don't need that many points with that double score fire truck able to heal and give shields to the squad as bulby's there dexter dives in on slash can all the pressure on slash can they're pushing them back pushing oh. them back pushing them back and that is a ko on the slash can and that's a big dps bulby coming in for the back cap though nobody's watching nobody's watching bulby 50. nobody's watching bulby and that's a 50 burger 100 ducats go in and Pretty now they just need to lead. protect the zapdos are you kidding me 77 points and now all of bad macro flipper it says oh snap we need it now that's a ko by snow points on the opposing elder oh, watching there. in the middle and they take it bad macro bird takes it now they have to flitter in they got 40 seconds to get it as much in as possible they're only down by 77 one of these people need to convert here only one need to convert slash can needs to play some defense and need to find where this opening is and they're trying to come around they just concede Ugh. bad macro flip bird takes it your grand finals winner and aos frontier battle factory 1k winners can you believe it yeah i cannot absolutely incredible work amazing macro always get bird yeah huge plays from the squad shout out to bruv dexter chris snow points and gosu incredible tournament run never dropping a full game or a full set in any of these scenarios uh, lasting through a gauntlet of a tournament and claiming the victory earning some wins over incredibly big name teams in this run too so not for nothing, this is a new team to beat on the docket. Uh, incredible work from Bad Macro Flipbird. A really excellent use of their, uh, their strategy in this game. Yeah, this tournament wasn't a wasn't a cakewalk. It was a buzzsaw and uh, <laughs> bad macro flipbird finding their ways to the end and closing it out. Um, not letting any team have the opportunity to sneak in and grab uh, grab that trophy from out of their hands. Um, so we're gonna send it back to the desk to close this thing out on behalf of us casters here, Kirk Dupes, Naxi Bay, Josh Zoinks, Hebert. Back to you at the desk.